N phase microinverters, Solar Edge DC optimizer system. Which is the best solution to install for a residential solar power system? We're going to be answering that question and much, much more in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past nine years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert reviews on solar panels, batteries, uh, inverter systems, basically anything that has to do with home renewable energy in battery storage. Now, in today's video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of the two leading inverter systems for residential solar. The Enphase IQ Microinverter System and the Solar Edge Home Energy Solution, or the Solar Edge Hub, they call it now. Now, prior to either of these two solutions becoming available, most solar was installed with what's known as a string inverter. And what a string inverter does is basically it takes a series connected uh, set of multiple solar panels, um, typically wired at very high voltage, so anywhere between 300 and 600 volts. And it takes these series connected uh, sets, we call them strings, uh, of multiple solar panels, uh, and it does a conversion of high voltage DC power, which is what the solar panels are natively wired for, and it converts it into uh, in, in here in the US, 240 volts alternating current power, which is what the electric grid is wired for, what our homes are wired for, and so then the AC power coming off of your solar inverter is then usable and it can be fed into your circuit breaker panel or fed directly back out to your meter if you're going to just be going, doing straight sell back to the power company. Now, the major disadvantage with the string inverter system, at least back when they were first released, the major disadvantage was that, uh, you know, you, you may have heard the saying that, you know, the, a string or, or a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so the way the solar panels were wired was basically in a daisy chain format. So you'd wire one panel to the next, to the next, to the next. And so if any one panel in that series um, was damaged, or even if any one of the panels was shaded because maybe, um, you know, some tree leaves fell on the solar panel or there was a shadow cast on one of those solar panels, it would knock the production of the entire string down. So in terms of solar panel performance, this was a big drawback. Um, the other issue was that there was no way for the, the user to monitor each individual solar panel. Um, typically you could log in and you could look at the overall uh, power input and output of the string inverter, but there was no way to drill down and look at performance down to the per solar panel level. So these were the two major drawbacks of the string inverter system. Well, Enphase came on the scene about 10 years ago with a solution to this problem. And the solution was instead of having one central inverter that did your DC to AC, your, your direct current to alternating current conversion, why not put a small inverter, what they call a microinverter, uh, on each solar panel? That way, each solar panel could be tracked individually, so you can, you can look at performance at a more detailed level, but also it would turn each solar panel into its own independent power station, basically. So if there ever was damage to one of your solar panels or if one of the solar panels malfunctioned, you know, the power loss would be limited to that single panel only, where the rest of the system would be able to continue to operate um, at maximum power because each, each microinverter was basically doing its, own, doing its own thing. And so if one microinverter went bad, it's not, you know, the, the other panels, the other inverters in the system are not dependent on it to get their power back to the breaker panel or to the meter base. So it solved those two problems, module level monitoring, as well as no central point of failure. Now, the downside with this though, is that the wiring was a little bit more complex. Instead of just daisy chaining all the solar panels together on the roof and then sending one circuit down to ground level, now you actually had to send multiple circuits up to the roof, multiple alternating current circuits up to the roof, and then branch them out on individual strings or individual trunks, is what they call them, uh, up on the rooftop. 
And so even now, as of this recording, even with the current generation Enphase microinverters, you're limited to between 11 and 14 microinverters per trunking cable. And so, you know, you then have to set up a separate cable. And the wiring is a little bit more cumbersome on the roof. But all in all, it was a great solution, solved the a single point of failure problem, solved the module level monitoring problem. Now, about four years later, SolarEdge came on the scene with the DC Optimizer solution. And what the DC Optimizer solution did was it basically put a DC Optimizer device on each individual solar panel. So basically each panel had a unique serial number and you could track performance coming from each optimizer unit and there, thereby by each panel. But the wiring was as simple as the old string inverters. You can basically put the optimizer under the panel, daisy chain all the optimizers together in a, in a series string, and then again, send just one or maybe two circuits from the roof down to the ground to the central inverter down there. And of course the central inverter would still do the DC to AC conversion at, at one place. So basically SolarEdge took it up a step and said, look, we'll give you the performance benefits and we'll give you the, uh, the module level monitoring benefits of the microinverter system, but we'll do it with the ease of wiring and with the lower cost of the string inverter system. And so SolarEdge you know, became the market leader very, very quickly after coming to market because the installers loved it. You've got all the performance benefits, you've got simple, cheap installation, right? So the installers could be more price competitive, more profitable, or at least in the, in the short term. And so SolarEdge established a dominant position here. Now, the downside though, of course, is that you still have a central point of failure. Right? If all power is still flowing through a central inverter unit at ground level, then if that inverter goes bad, you lose power production for the entire system. And unfortunately, that's what we saw with the first generation of the Solar Edge, uh, the Solar Edge, what we call set app inverters, which is basically the inverter that you see pictured here. There's no actual display or control panel on the inverter itself. Everything is programmed using the app on your smartphone and there's a Wi-Fi communication between your smartphone and the set app inverter. And, uh, and when the first generation came out, we were seeing failure rates as high as 40 or 50% right out of the box, brand new. Now, since then, SolarEdge has addressed a number of those service and reliability issues. And from what I've seen, the feedback over the past year is that both systems are just about equally as reliable. Um, all things being equal, if I had to choose one system for my home, I probably would still go with the Enphase microinverter system just because someone like myself, I always like that redundancy. I like that idea of, you know, no central point of failure. If I've got damage to, you know, some part of my system, the rest of the system can still operate. So I do like that, you know, just from a, from a preparedness, from a self-sufficiency standpoint. Um, however, uh, the Solar Edge does have another advantage and that is in the area of clipping loss. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with clipping loss, generally there's gonna be a difference between the uh, ideal test conditions DC rating of your solar panel and then the actual AC output rating of your inverter system, whether you're talking microinverter for each panel or a central inverter to convert for the entire system. But it's very common in the solar industry to have your DC rating on your solar panels uh, as much as 20 or 25% higher than the AC rating on your inverter. And so, Joe, you know, you might ask, Joe, why would you, why would you put a larger solar panel on an inverter that can't handle it? Uh, and the answer is very simply, the way that solar panels are rated are in what's called STC conditions or standard test conditions. Basically, that means perfect laboratory conditions. Temperature is cool, the light source is applied directly perpendicular to the solar cells, there's no clouds, there's no shading. Basically everything's perfect in the lab. In the real world, you're almost never going to see that type of conditions. And so you'll notice that solar panels are also rated uh, with what's called NMOT, or Normal Module Operating Temperature. Um, 
Another way to think about it is real world conditions. So you have your STC, which is your ideal lab conditions, and then you have your NMOT, which is more like real world conditions where the panel is going to operate. And so again, it's very common that you have a difference of say 20 or 25% of the power rating between those two levels. Now, when you go to size the inverter for your solar system, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the difference in the solar uh, panel power rating and the inverter power rating. And this is especially important when you're looking at micro inverter systems, because what we've seen in the past year, as we're now we're talking about going into 2023, what we've seen in the past year is that uh, the size and the power output of the solar panels themselves has been outpacing the growth in the power output on the micro inverters. So as of this recording, one of our most popular solar panels for residential installations is the Aptos 440 watt panel. However, the most popular micro inverter that we're pairing with that is the Enphase IQ8A, which still has a continuous power rating of only 349 or 350 watts. So there is a 90 watt difference there in terms of what the panel can do at max versus what the micro inverter can sustain at max output. Again, in most cases, it's not gonna come up and it's not gonna become an issue because again, the solar panel is not usually operating at, at its max potential. It's, it's, it's operating in the real world, not in a laboratory. But it's something I figured I should mention because one area where the solar edge system does have an advantage is in minimizing the clipping loss. Uh, it's much, much easier to pair the solar panel with a DC optimizer that can handle the full output, like let's say the 440 watts or even up to 500 watt optimizers they have now. And then just make sure that your central inverter is also properly sized to handle the full power output or at least close to that full power output. Again, 20, 25% oversizing is okay. Anything beyond that, you, you may be, begin to ask questions and may want to bump it up a level in terms of the size rating. But Solar Edge generally does have the advantage in terms of clipping loss. So to summarize it, folks, uh, Enphase has got the advantage in terms of resiliency and reliability redundancy. Solar Edge has got the advantage in terms of lower cost and in terms of lower clipping loss. Now, in addition to the inverter system, I should say that both of these companies now also offer their own batteries, offer their own load controller, offer their own EV charger. So what we're seeing is that the inverter companies are really becoming the, the, the hub around which the entire home energy system is being built. And so, you know, again, SolarEdge, they bought their own battery company back in 2018. Enphase is manufacturing their own battery now. They're already on their second generation. And so I think we're gonna see that trend continue of the entire home energy ecosystem converging under one of these two brands, or at least these are the two market leaders at the time of this recording. Well, folks, this has been a brief discussion of the Enphase microinverters versus the Solar Edge DC optimizer system uh, and an updated perspective on it as we're going into 2023. Um, folks, as always, if um, you know, you're getting good value from the content that we have on Solar Surge, you know, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. You know, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos that come out, they'll show up on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Now, of course, if you're in the process of looking at solar power options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if you already have a quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or you're getting the most up-to-date equipment, you know, as always, reach out to us on the link below. We'd be happy to have a short Zoom call with you. We'll listen to you as far as what your needs and what your situation is, and then we'll be happy to get some pricing and some information over to you right away. Well, folks, I thank you for taking some time to spend with Solar Surge today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.